In a perfect world, it is a jury of your peers, but factors vary. Things like race and religion and gender and age come into play. But what about whether they are a felon? In Maryland, the push is to allow former felons to sit on jury duty, a case where the guilty actually wind up sitting in judgment of those who are deemed innocent until proven guilty. Quentin, this is interesting for, for black and brown Americans because in many cases, they deal with the ex-offenders at their dinner table at the family reunion because they've come out because there are so many black and brown people in, in prison. Should they be allowed to sit on the jury? Uh, absolutely. If the goal is, as we say, uh, to once one has paid their debt to society in, in, in forms of a prison sentence, um, then they are allowed to be re reintegrated into society. And so that means uh, restoring the rights that they had prior to the conviction, uh, which includes sitting on a jury uh, to distribute justice uh, for the next accused uh, uh, in the situation. So, yeah, absolutely. Corinne, same question to you, but with a twist. Um, should felons be allowed to sit on juries? And, and in the case of Kim Potter, for instance, if she were in Maryland and she did her two years after she did her two years, should she be allowed to sit on jury duty in a manslaughter case? Um, I think that jury selection will be interesting considering this. Um, a lot of lawyers will have a lot to say about that, I'm sure, when they're picking their juries. Um, but I do agree that you should have the right to sit on a jury if you've paid your, if you've done your time, you've paid the price, then absolutely. And in Maryland, they restored voting rights for felons, I think, five or six years ago. So this seems like a natural progress in restoring rights. If you've done your time, you should you should have all of the rights that we all have and, you know, all of the responsibilities. I don't know very many people who actually look forward to jury duty. So um, good to expand that pool because I don't want to get called so much. <laughs> she actually may have hit the nail right on the head, which is why not let everybody sit on jury duty because nobody wants to. But, Quentin, aren't we getting to really the essence of what the argument is about? which is it's not necessarily about whether felons should sit on jury duty, but whether or not prison is doing what prison is designed to do, which is to rehabilitate the offender so that he or she can come back into society. Well, you know, that's what we say. You know, that's why I, I air quote it, if that's, what, if that's what the goal is. That's what we say prison is for. Uh, but it is clear when you watch documentaries like 13th, uh, that there is uh, systemic targeting of black, brown, and indigenous folks to go into prison, uh, right? Laws created uh, that gives uh, though our people a higher propensity to go there because people profit off of our bodies being incarcerated. And so we say the, that is the goal, but really, uh, in actuality, the goal is really recidivism because when you don't restore someone's rights, when you make it more difficult for them to gain employment after incarceration, you continue to put them in a space uh, to... to almost reoffend. It's almost, into, it's, it's criminal when you really think about it. Um, and so that is the core of it. So I'm going to continue to air quote, if we say it is for restorative justice to reintegrate people into society, then we must do our part on the back end once folks are released to ensure that they are successful at that. Corinne, Maryland might be the exception to the rule. It is a Democrat state. It is a Republican governor. But that being said, should this pass, do you see it actually um, being translated into other Republican-led states? I, I certainly hope so. And I think that we, we do see this effort uh, nationwide. In Florida, they restored voting rights to felons in 2018. Like I said, I think this is the natural progression of that. And I hope so. So we'll see. And that's a very red state by comparison. So we'll see how it goes. Quentin, let me ask you the question this way. Is this a black and brown issue? And if you consider it to be a black and brown issue, what does it say about our, our own perceptions inside black America as to what the criminal justice system looks like? For instance, why would you assign race to an issue that affects more white convicted offenders than it does black and brown convicted offenders, even percentage wise? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely a black and brown issue because when we look at the disproportionality of these sentencing, uh, sentencing uh, for people who are committing the same offense. Uh, we also must look at uh, once it's time for that person to be released from prison, right? How, how the systems that we already have in place that disadvantage black and brown folks continue to disadvantage them, particularly after they have been released 
from being incarcerated. And so when we talk about uh, dignity and respect, and when we talk about people creating pathways uh, for sustainability in their lives, if you already have the systems in place uh, that make it harder for them to gain employment, make it harder for them to access programs that are funded by the government for those communities, uh, particularly br black and brown communities, then it is absolutely a black and brown issue because we bear the hardest brunt of it. Corinne, same question as you. Is this a black and brown thing because the vast majority of people sitting in prison are white? Well, I think that, like Quentin said, we should equal the playing field. So it doesn't, it doesn't particularly matter if it affects one group or the other. We want, want an equal playing field. We want people to have jobs. We don't want them to be uh, going in and out of prison. And it should be a goal, regardless of color, to make sure that that happens for the better of every single community.